Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's October 6th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First up, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market. Here are five stocks from the world of waste, gas, and energy to look out for from this past week. As of October 6, 2023, Clean Energy Corps is trading at a volume of 2,422. Dominion Energy is at 3,326. Atlantica Sustainable is up to a volume of 3,811. Chenier Energy is up to a volume of 6,148. And Enbridge Incorporated is currently trading at a volume of 7,313. But first up in the news, this past week, Archaea Energy announced the official startup of its original Archaea Modular Design Renewable Natural Gas Plant in Medora, Indiana. Located next to a landfill owned by Rumkey Waste and Recycling, this is the first plant to come online since BP's acquisition of Archaea in December 2022. Traditionally, RNG plants have been custom-built, but the Archaea modular design allows plants to be built on skids with interchangeable components, using a standardized modular design, which leads to faster builds than previous industry standards. Up next... Rstream, a robotics company focused on waste management and recycling formed by two University of Massachusetts Amherst students, is rolling out an AI-driven pilot program with the University of Massachusetts Dining Services. Running through the fall semester, the program will test the AI's ability to identify in real time what is going through the waste stream. Co-founders Ian Gooding and Ethan Walco will present their technology officially along with the demonstration of the system, dubbed Audit Pro, to members of the press and the community October 17th at 5.30 p.m. local in the Lincoln Campus Center. Up next, the U.S. Composting Council and Biodegradable Products Institute released a set of guiding principles to inform model legislation for labeling compostable products. The principles were developed after months of consensus building by a task force composed of both organizations' members, including compostable product markers, certifiers, municipal leaders, allied members of the USCC, and compost manufacturers. A full list of the guidelines can be found at compostingcouncil.org. And speaking of composting, the Brady Trucking Company is now operating a new food waste composting system at its existing mulch production facility in Shelton, Washington. The composting facility uses a covered aerated static pile process with technology and facility designs provided by Green Mountain Technologies in Bainbridge Island, Washington. Evan Brady, co-owner of Brady Trucking, said, quote, Once we looked closely at the numbers and conceptual operating plans, we realized this was just the natural next step for our business. For years, we've been purchasing compost in bulk to have availability for our mulch clients who also need compost. Now we're able to efficiently make our own compost while keeping food waste out of landfills, end quote. And just a reminder... Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com, that's diamondsci.com, or call them at 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. Waste Management's new Cleveland, Ohio area plant will test if plastic bags can be recovered from the recycling stream. The new supermarket-sized shed-like building takes in recyclable materials from all over the region and is designed to process 144,000 tons of material each year. Aaron Johnson, Waste Management's Great Lakes Area Vice President of Technology, said, quote, It's something new that we're piloting. Most plants do not have this. I'm confident we'll get it to work. End quote. 
And staying in Ohio for just a moment, Dayton has approved a deal to sell biogas from its wastewater treatment facility in exchange for millions of dollars in quote-unquote royalties, joining a small number of Midwestern cities to pursue this type of environmentally friendly project. Dayton, Ohio could receive about $16 million in net revenue from the deal over the next two decades while cutting emissions from city facilities by about 50%, said Meg Maloney, Dayton's sustainability manager. But moving to South Carolina, a federal grant of nearly $600,000 has been awarded to the state's Department of Health and Environmental Control to help improve waste reduction and recycling initiatives across the state. The Solid Waste Infrastructure for Recycling grant was offered by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to address solid waste management planning, outreach campaigns, data collection, and improvement of waste reduction and recycling initiatives throughout the country. More than $105 million has been awarded to recipients, including $32 million to states and U.S. territories. And lastly, the Detroit City Council unanimously voted this past week to approve a resolution to support Michigan State Bill No. 228, which itself is meant to repeal Michigan Public Act No. 389. PA 389 is a preemption law prohibiting the regulation of single-use plastic containers or auxiliary containers by local jurisdictions such as the City of Detroit. Detroit City Council support of SB 228 aims to restore the authority to local governments as best positioned to assess and mitigate the environmental and health impacts of single-use plastics within their communities. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for October 6, 2023, presented by Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we'll see you back next Friday for another brand new episode of Recyclist. Thank you.